Hello, Fuke Candy here, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. And we are back in downtown Oradon. That's right, it's been a while since we have been here. We're now on episode 50 as well. Can't quite believe that. But we are going to leave behind our commuter town just for a little bit to revamp Oradon's skyline. Now that we have got the City Skylines Skyscrapers content creator pack. And I have to say, this is probably the best addition to the base game ever. <laughs> In all the years of playing cities, this has been so, so needed. Particularly if you don't have game anarchy or move it so you can spam your own uniques. Because what you can see in the Oridan downtown is there is a lot of gaps. So what I want to do is come in today and beef this up a little bit. Change out some of our IT cluster and our office buildings for much higher, taller skyscrapers, which I think is going to really give us a, a meaty downtown, shall I say. And of course, there's also been the free updates. We now do have brand spanking new trams running around our downtown as well. Some of which you can check out here, which actually fit quite nicely, luckily, into our nice big tram stop here within our transport hub. So yeah, absolutely loving those. But yeah, the main concentration for today, I think I really want to preserve our two towers Oridan look. That's obviously been the key feature of Oridan since we've got in the downtown. So I'm very keen to make sure that that is still a very visible feature from all of our key viewpoints. But we really want to beef it up around it. And I mean, looking at the downtown now, there's so many gaps in it. Like the Gherkin's very, very naked here. So we need to beef it up. We need to change out some of these office buildings for higher density skyscrapers and really fill it out. So that's what we're going to be doing today, and then we'll be getting back to our commuter town after that. And of course, the Skyscrapers Content Creator Pack, along with Heart of Korea and the new radio stations, are all should be available shortly on Instant Gaming. You can check that out via my affiliate link below. That will also help to support the channel. All the other City Skylines DLCs and Content Creator Packs are also available there amongst a whole host of other games at really, really good prices. So please do go and check that out and also help to support the channel. Okay, hey, so I want to start off in this area around the Gherkin for sure. And I think there's some obvious buildings that we can change out here. These are just too small, frankly. So let's get rid of these. Oh, there's going to be a lot of demolishing today. But it's much needed when we get a new pack to fit in new buildings and change things up and make things better. And you can always make things better, I think. There's always room for changes and improvements. Now, we've also got, obviously, a bit of detailing around here that we are going to have to destroy as well. So what we will do today is place in our skyscrapers and then we will come through with a little bit of a shorter detailing time lapse to normal to make sure that we've got the appropriate detail around the skyscrapers as we see fit. Now, this one is absolutely massive, but I think that that is needed around the gherkin here. We need to get a little bit more height in around this area. We obviously want to preserve the two towers, as mentioned, but... The main kind of viewpoint from the two towers is obviously from our Williams Memorial Arch over here. So that's really what I want to make sure that I can still see those very clearly in the foreground. So we don't want to block the view in front of it. But behind it, we can definitely beef it up a lot more around this transport hub. So that's going to kind of be the focus for the start of this episode. And I really, really like this tower. It's got the modern glass, which goes nicely with the gherkin and with these IT cluster buildings here. Also this one as well. It's got a very similar modern vibe to these, which I think will fit in appropriately. Now, we just have to think a little bit about placement here. So we have got some back doors by the looks of it, with the little vents uh, coming out the back there. So we want to make sure that they are accessible. We have got this little walkway through from the back of these buildings here. So it could be that we just shift these over. We've got a nice little fountain bench area over this side too. I think let's just grab move it. And we'll just shift it ever so slightly closer to the gherkin. And I think this is quite an interesting thing as well, because the gherkin in London did used to stand there pretty pride of place in the city of London area, but now it is absolutely shrouded by much taller skyscrapers. So somewhat appropriate that we are now doing this here. See, I like how that sits in, and we may just want to put in a couple more planters and benches and the such like around the bottom to really help that sit in well. It's not actually too much kind of like obvious entrance ways around the bottom here but I like the glass effect of that so we'll leave that one in there. The other ones I want to change up are over here as well I think we could do with a bit more height the other side just to balance out that new building and I'll probably keep these lower ones along the front I think in terms of a slight build up of height. We'll keep these buildings here so that we've got some little layers building up as we go towards the transport hub in the main downtown. 
Now, the tallest asset that we have with the skyscrapers is this one, but it's far too dominant, and I think it will take away from our two towers. So I'm actually not going to use this in Oridon, but I have to say this is the nicest asset ever. <laughs> it's such a good one, so do go and check that one out. I think what would be quite appropriate for this corner is actually this one with the slightly skinnier base here. And it has got trees on it, so we may want to bob these off. And I think we will bob these off because they're too close to that other building. So let's just get our bob for the first time today. We'll find our trees and I think, yeah, let's just remove all of these from the base of the building. As nice as they are, they don't fit in with our street detailing that we have got here. So that's a little bit cleaner. We can add any more planters in when we come to do the detailing time lapse as well. Now, I think, again, that's a super, super nice building. Adds a really nice layer of height next to the gherkin and also our fused office skyscrapers over here as well. I think it sits quite nicely, especially with the skinnier base. It fits into this corner quite well with the pathway going through to the bus stop there. Yeah. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now over this side as well, these buildings are just way too low. We definitely want some more height in around here next to the train station. So let's go ahead and delete out these ones as well. And I think we are going to have to delete our lovely little planters. Potentially our statue as well. I might move that for a second so we can keep that in there. Because that's quite a nice one. So let's just move it back over here. Are these trees dying? They don't look right. <laughs> so let's just move it back to there, the other side of the monorail for a second, and then we can see which assets we can fit into here. So I'm thinking something long and skinny, and there's some really nice different shaped skyscrapers within these buildings. Like this is a, that's a big boy. <laughs> that is a big one. We have got these ones that are slightly too wide to fit into this space. So the one that I am thinking is most appropriate for here is actually one of these. I'm thinking possibly the taller version of it, this one. I think it sits in a little bit better with the buildings around it, it being that tall. I mean, you can see now we're really getting a massive central business district down here compared to the lower rise buildings that we had into Oridon before. And that sits quite nicely into this space. I might just adjust it over ever so slightly so we've got a little bit more room on the pavement that side actually back just a tiny tiny slither yeah i think that that is good there and then we'll add in another one in behind it what i am thinking for that is potentially this one i mean if that's maybe a little bit tall we might want to go for the slightly lower rise version of that which yeah i think this one would sit in quite nicely it's a good shape for fitting into this area here you can position it nicely onto this road it goes nicely in next to the investment tower there and then we just need some more planters, etc., around the back. So again, we'll come to do that in the detailing time lapse and make sure we've got beautiful bottoms to all of our skyscrapers here. But again, when we're doing this, we always want to be checking the wider perspective of this. So that I quite like. We've got some different layers of height here. I think if we chose the bigger one, it would be very kind of flat in the similar height to this tall building that we've got there. So yeah, I think that sits in a little bit better. So our downtown transport hub is going to start to become really shady with all of these skyscrapers around it but this is super exciting and yeah I, I'm absolutely loving putting these in and revamping. Now the other bit that I do want to change up quite a bit is here because as you can see from the wider angles we've got super low buildings it goes into the transport hub and then it's super tall buildings all around the other side. We really want to try and surround that central transport hub a bit better I think and I think these are the obvious buildings to adjust here. So let's go ahead and delete out this whole block. And I think for now, we're probably, and you see lots of surface painter is going to be needed in here to fix this all up. And I think for now, we are going to have to delete out our lovely little rock tree garden planter element over here as well. There we go. And we have got these planters along the street as well. We do need to be a little bit mindful of, so we may need to adjust those. Now, one of the other tallest assets that we do have in this skyscrapers pack is this one. And again, this is such a nice asset with the different layers of height. And see, this really is actually taller, I think, than the Panoa Street Towers. So it's definitely a dominant force in the skyline, but I think it is really rather nice. And you can see from here, where we had all those gaps around the gherkin, you could just see straight through it. This really helps to fill it out. We we'll want something in this side, I think, as well, uh, to get it from that angle. 
but we still preserve that strength of the two towers in the middle there so i'm quite happy i think with how that looks we really want to beef it up around it because that's such a tall building to just be stood there essentially by itself so let's also grab a couple more skyscrapers in to put around it here and this one fits in perfectly this side again gives us some nice different layers of height it's not too tall against the panoa street towers there fits really nicely into the existing space that we've got too and do you know what? That plaza is a bit rubbish there. We can definitely beef that up with a bit of detailing when we come to it. And I am actually going to go ahead and delete all of these props from here because I don't think that they are going to be needed. And I'm pretty sure there's now some underneath this building as well. So yeah, let's get rid of those because I would like to add another skyscraper into the front here. And I'm thinking this one, something a little bit lower. I think that one's a bit too tall and takes away actually from the mega tower we've got behind it. So yeah, let's go for the lower, the lower version. We'll place it onto the street this side again. It comes with a tree, a couple of trees and some little benches there. So we need to be aware of that when we come to the detailing. It may be a bob job just to tidy that up a little bit. Although it does seem to sit in quite nicely with a decent amount of space between that and this skyscraper there. Uh, so yeah, reasonably pleased with that. I think let's just shift this over slightly so we've got a little passageway coming in between these offices here. I don't think they'd necessarily be fused or joined at this point. And then let's just find another skyscraper to add in here. So I think we'll delete half of this block and we'll go for this one because this has a sort of similar-ish vibe to that just base game office building there. And we can do a little bit of fusing to line this up. So that it sits nicely in with those buildings and so it's very close to the pavement this side so we will have to push it back just ever so slightly so yeah i think we can get away with fusing this in let's just make sure we're not showing those uh extra solar panels there and lining up the walls nicely to where the windows sit making sure that that is the case either side as well quite happy i think with the vibe that that brings almost yeah it looks like there's always a door coming out onto the roof there actually so quite pleased with how that looks <laughs> we can have an extra door in there to make sure there's no glitching that side but again you can see here now we are just really beefing up this skyline and let's again come from the water view which was a little bit sparse beforehand we've got some nice buildings and layers of height in there behind the gherkin still a bit of a gap over this side which is what we'll have a look at next but all in all i think this is starting to fill out quite nicely so what I will do is just go ahead and place a few more skyscrapers in at this side of the downtown and we'll come back and have a look what we can do in front of the Panoa Street Towers. I think that that overall from this side of the downtown is looking an awful, awful lot better. We've still got that two towers sitting right in the middle there. And yeah, I'm quite, quite liking how this has turned out. If we go down into the transport hub as well, it feels very much more central business district kind of feel to it. Obviously, we've still got this space to fill out, which we will be coming to. We will be coming to. But... Yeah, I'm liking how this has turned out overall, I think, adding extra beefiness to our skyline from this side. Now, the other kind of angle that I really want to make sure we preserve is obviously our highway, raised highway drive through the downtown here. So coming over this side, there's quite a lot of lower buildings as we come in from this angle. 
And I'm not going to do anything I would add around this tower here. I, I want to preserve that as a kind of second peak to our downtowns when we look at it like this. We've got our main central business district here and then this extra skyscraper over this side. That was kind of always the view that I'd envisaged for Oradun. So as we come in here, there's definitely some of these buildings that we can change up in front of the Panoa Street Towers over here. But obviously we do want to be mindful that we're not adding anything too high uh, to this point. But we can block essentially the bottom of the tower here. And I think these two buildings here are something that's always stood out to me a little bit. They're so low and they just end up adding so much space around the towers that I don't think it really sits in to right here. So we are actually going to go ahead still in Bob, <laughs> and delete out this part of the university. We've got so much university education that we definitely don't need it anyway. And we're going to just add in a couple of towers down this side. So I think of this space, what we will add is a trio of buildings and do a little bit of fusing. So we've got this taller version and then these two shorter versions of the same building. So let's just add three of these into here just for a second. We'll sort those out in a minute. Obviously, it's crossing our monorail line. But you can see even the taller one actually isn't too tall against the Panoa Street Towers. So we still preserve the view of the top of the towers there without disturbing it too much. So let's go ahead and place these in in a really nice formation to fill this little space here. So we do actually have a road that runs right through here uh, so that we can place buildings against it. So yeah, when this says it's not connected to the road, we can actually just spin it round and that should sort out our problems there. But what I'd like to do is, yeah, create this into a little bit of a trio of skyscrapers. So if we turn this around once more, there we go, then that is now connected. And what we'll do is just kind of fuse it into the side of this one. These are all exactly the same style, so they go together very, very well indeed. Let's just quick move it so you can see that. And in fact, actually, this one's slightly orange and this one's blue. I wonder if we reset it, we can get to the same colour. Yeah, there we go. So now, <laughs> now all of these buildings match in this sort of red style, which I quite like. I'm wondering if actually if the blue would be better. Can we reset the large tower? We can, of course, repaint them as well. And we get nice consistent colours between all of those buildings. We're a little bit in the shade over here, so it's difficult to see. But OK, let's come back to this one. So I'm quite liking how those are sitting, but I think what we'll do here is just spin this one round and we'll position it more onto the corner of this building here. What we really want to do when we're fusing buildings is making sure that we're looking at the window lines and that nothing is interrupted there. So it looks like it actually makes sense. We're not cutting windows in half or doors in half at the bottom of the towers or anything like that. So I think well, that's actually looking pretty good and all of them are connected to roads so we don't need to use spawn points or have any issues there but i think that sits in quite nicely in front of the panoa street towers there i may actually leave this building so we've got some slight changes in height i don't want everything to just be monster skyscrapers preserve some of that original Oradin downtown so yeah i like that i think that beefs that up just enough and then in front of it over here i do want to change these two buildings up i was never too sure about these ones so let's go ahead and delete them and just checking what's under the highway here it is just overgrowth onto a car park so there's nothing we need to worry about blocking this side so i would actually really like to use the round buildings here now i think the tall round one is just going to be too tall and take away from the panoa street towers let's just have a little look at that mm, might not be too bad actually if we come down to our williams yeah, see from here, it completely blocks the towers and that's absolutely what I want to preserve. So that one is too tall for us to use in this situation. So let's get rid of the tall tower. Let's use the shorter round version, which should be absolutely fine. Yeah, definitely not interrupting with that height there. And let's just shift this up so that we're right up against the highway. Right into this corner here. And again, we'll need more detailing around the bottom of these towers to sit them in really nicely as we have done with our original skyscrapers. I think next to it what we'll do is add in another shorter building and again we can do a little bit of building fusing here just to merge these ones together because they're the same white concrete so it doesn't look too often disturbing. Let me shift that back and try and make those pillars align. How does that look on the other side? 
not too bad. We've got space in between here. It's not interrupting with the highway. Let's just have a little look at that highway view as we come in. You can't really notice it because it's shadowed by the other building. I suppose from this way it would be more obvious. And yeah, I really like that. That's extra height there and we can't really see through the buildings. It just feels very downtown like that. And again, from wider angles, you can see we're just adding a bit more beef to the height down this end. We're trying to find those lower height assets for here. Now for this side, I'm wondering if we can replace these two buildings here, these two office buildings, as much as I like these two assets, they are pretty fantastic. I think what we will do is use this skyscraper here instead. And again, this is another not quite as tall as some of the other assets. You see, we've got a much taller version of it here, which would really take away from those two towers. But I think it's low enough that we can preserve that view through to them. But obviously we did some building merging here before, so we do just want to make sure that this happens again. Yeah, we've got a row <laughs> monorail support there. Let's just move that back. <laughs> but okay, let's move this up into, I think what we will do actually is we could potentially leave a little alleyway through here. I'm just wondering what is out the back here. We've got some bins and benches, potentially some back entrances. So we could leave a very, very small alley, but what we want to definitely do is line up the building with the front of these shops here and down the side this way. And in fact, I think what we will do is line this up with this corner of the building here. So let's move this over. Make sure that concrete is blocking those windows there so it doesn't look like it's interrupting too badly. And that's not too bad. Little bit dodgy at the bottom there. We could probably add some detailing to cover that up. And then we have got our little back alley through there, which of course we will do some detailing around come the detailing time lapse. And again, it's just adding that little bit of blockiness in front. And we're still getting a view through to the two towers there. So happy with that. Now over this side as well, I think I am going to get rid of these buildings here these IT cluster which just aren't quite as tall as I would like them to be so let's remove all of these for the moment um leaving the detailing just for a second and see if we can work around it but in here let's get in another building now there's one that's got the most absolutely gorgeous bottom to it I think is this one yeah really really like how this sits onto this square bottom here and I think that this will go really nicely we've got this small row of shop fronts you may remember with the uh, snowman mafia behind it so we've got that running down the side so we've got a nice parallel surface to that I think will work quite nicely here but obviously we want to make sure that we're not clipping onto the pavements or into anything else we can absolutely clip into the back of this shopping center which is no problem at all. So I think let's move that right up so that, that does clip into there. We've got the space on the pavement to breathe around this side. So yeah, quite happy with that. And then again, if we just look from the road here, you can see it's just so much more height coming in from this highway, which is exactly what I want to see. You can look through here and see all the different layers and all the different skyscrapers. Oh, it's just such a good addition. Absolutely fantastic addition to the game. I think this pack. And I think here, let's add in one more to the back of this shopping centre just to give this bit area a little bit more height here as well. So let's grab, move it, and we'll shift this round. And then we'll pull it back a little bit. So it's sitting actually right into this shopping centre. So it's almost merging into the roof of it. So like that, I think is okay in this middle section. We have got this little outhouse there, which we can merge into. I think that's okay sitting something like that just adds an extra height to the front of that shopping centre there and we still get quite a nice back entrance into the middle of it here again we'll sort out some of this detailing and make it a lot better out the front here and then this little space finally I think I'll actually use one of the buildings that we used before and use this one because it is low enough that it's not blocking any heights which is slightly taller I think than the transport tower there adds in a few different layers slightly smaller than these ones that we've just put up against the highway there too so I think that sits in this space quite nicely next to the metro station. We have to be wary of where our paths are going as well here. People walking all over. There's going to be a lot of check-in the walking routes to see where they're all coming from and why they're walking down that way. I must have put in a path. Yeah, there we go. There it is. We are massively blocking that path there with this skyscraper, but we can sort that out with the detailing. And this road now coming in as well. This. <laughs> 
this is what it's all about. This like view up into the skyscrapers, up into the downtown as you come in. You still got these lower buildings as well around it. Yeah, this is exactly what we wanted to see. This view out the front here. I'm super excited about it. I'll definitely add some first person perspectives into the cinematics at the end of this episode so that you can see that. And I will also do a downtown first person perspective very soon. Looking from all around now, there's far fewer gaps in that skyline than we had before. You can still very clearly see those two towers from the Panoa Street Towers. And I mean, if we do come over to obviously the downtown viewpoint, which is the Williams Memorial site, you can see here that's so much more beefy now. It's so much more beefy. <laughs> Looms out of absolutely nowhere, which I really, really like. But we do have layers of height, obviously, building up to it. This bridge coming across here as well. This was a key viewpoint for me from over here. And this still, you get that build up around it either side. So, yeah, quite pleased with that. So I think now it is time to just come in with a bit of detailing to tidy up some of those skyscraper bottoms in the new addition places that we've put and just make those street faces really, really nice. Lots of surface painter in there to fill in some of those gaps. So I'll jump into that time lapse and I'll be right back.
So this has been so much fun to give Orin and Skyline a revamp. I definitely don't think Skylines are my strongest point. I'm much more into intricate street detailing and industrial detailing. But I'm super, super pleased with the results that we have here. I think it really has given massive, massive improvements to our Oridan skyline. And I hope you enjoyed those first person perspectives coming into the downtown. So just to go over what we've done around the buildings, we have just added in a few planters. We've got some sitting sims as well, of course, just to liven it up, make it feel alive and used. Added some kind of makeshift awnings here, but actually the better ones are over on this side where we have used these glass awnings just to add a little something to the front of these skyscrapers. I felt like this was very plain and boring along the edge of the street here, in particular here. So yeah, I think that adds something to the edge of the building. I hope you'll appreciate that. A little bit of tiling and just some props, some more trees and planters and that sort of thing lying around. We did add in this extra little food court plaza here outside some of these skyscrapers and just jazzed up this area a bit more tiling around the edge of this building for example as well um so yeah i'm, re I'm really 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 pleased with the results and i've had a lot of fun doing this there's so many perspectives that i keep wanting to check for our downtown like from the oridan skyline it looks so much more filled out and realistic now i think so super super pleased with that and of course the main event all the way over from the Williams Memorial Mount. We've still got our two towers in there. We've got our second peak with the tower over here and just, yeah, that looks so much better. So much better. Yeah, I'm learning a lot about skylines doing this. <laughs> but really from every angle, we have filled in a lot of those gaps and made it feel a lot more dense. So pleased with the results and I really can't recommend going to pick up this skyscrapers pack enough it is just adds so much to the base game that we haven't had those extra layers of height you know as nice as the IT cluster buildings are they're not that tall <laughs> these really add something and compete with those Panoa Street buildings and like the the office tower and things that we've had before from other content creator packs but just so many more of them and so much more choice this is only really scratching the surface of the towers that are available. Rodan's downtown isn't massive, so I didn't want to overdo it. But really, really pleased with it, and I hope you've enjoyed it. So for today, that is going to be it. If you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments and shares are super, super appreciated. And I just want to thank you all for getting us to 50 episodes of Oridan. <laughs> We've had several live streams and a couple of first person tours as well, but I really hope you've enjoyed the ride so far. I've loved every single minute and we've still got more to come in Oridan. It's not going anywhere just yet. Don't forget as well to check out my instant gaming link if you do want to pick up the Skyscrapers pack. It should be available very soon along with any of the other City Skylines DLCs or content creator packs. But that is all from me for today. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.